Seeing your 3D objects come to life is really satisfying. So in this lesson, let's look at a super basic introduction to the animation tools in Blender. The first thing to know about is the timeline, which we've referenced before in previous lessons. Here we can hit play and play our animation, or pause it, or we can do that exact same thing anywhere in our viewport with the spacebar. Now, of course, things aren't really moving anywhere, so let's make things move. For a super basic example, let's just move our cube along the X axis. So what we need to do is tell Blender where the cube should start and where it should stop, and then Blender will do all of the in-between work for us. So to tell Blender where an object is at any particular point in time, we just have to insert a keyframe. To do that, we can select an object, go to Object, Animation, and Insert Keyframe. Then it'll pop open a menu, which asks us which type of information we want to save at this particular point in time. For now, let's just choose Location. Now we can see we have a little dot here in our timeline, and as we scrub along the playhead, then we won't notice any change, but that's because we haven't put any other keyframes in. So let's go to frame, let's say 100, and then just move our cube along the x-axis. I'll select it, hit G and X, and move it over here. Then let's insert another location keyframe. Object, animation, insert keyframe, or we could just use the hotkey I. I'll click location again, and now we've told Blender that we want this cube to be over here on frame 100, and if we go back to the start of our animation using the jump to start icon, then we can see at the beginning it's over here. And if we play this back, Blender will smoothly transition between the two. Let's say we wanted to change this up a little bit. Maybe we wanted it to actually slide along the ground, and right now we have it in the wrong place. Well, let's go back to our first frame here. I'll just jump to the beginning here. And let's move it up along the Z axis. I'll hit G and Z until it's sitting on the ground. Now, if I change where I am in my timeline, it's going to jump right back to where it was, because remember, we've saved that location right there on that specific place in the timeline. And if we don't save our information again, then our change is going to be lost. So if we make a change, I'll just hit G and Z and move this upwards, then we have to insert another keyframe. Again, that's I and location. Now let's go to that next keyframe, and instead of scrubbing directly to it, because we might accidentally be you know, one frame off or whatever, I can also just use the jump to keyframe button to the right of the play button. That'll jump right to it. I can hit G and Z and move this upwards. Now I can save our keyframe just like we did before in the 3D view, but I can also do that same thing in our properties editor. You'll notice under the transform location that our value inputs have changed colors. This tells us different information about the keyframes. But first let's go ahead and insert a keyframe right here in our properties editor instead of in the 3D view. For that I can just hover over a value, right click, and I'll choose replace keyframes. That'll replace the current location keyframes with the new one. So if we're directly on a keyframe, then we'll get this orange color. And if it's animated but off a keyframe, then we'll get this green color. We also have a little indicator icon to the right of our keyframes, which we can also click at any time. So let's say I wanted to add a new rotation keyframe over on the first frame. Well, then I could jump to my first frame and then just click this little button. I'll add a Z rotation keyframe just by clicking that dot to the right of the value. Then we'll get that little diamond icon, which tells us that we now have a keyframe there. Then I'll go ahead and jump to our next keyframe on frame 100. And I'll change our Z rotation and click that little icon again and save that keyframe. Now our cube is going to rotate as it moves. Again, I can also play this back by pressing the spacebar. What's really cool about animation in Blender though is that you can keyframe most properties. There are a few things that you can't keyframe, but most of them you can. So we can actually change the color of this cube as well. Let's go over to our material properties. And let's go over to our material preview so we can actually see it. And let's change the base color here. First, I'll make it a blue. And now let's add a keyframe to our base color. Well, of course, we could just press this little keyframe button to insert a keyframe that way. Or we could also right click and add a keyframe through our right click context menu. Or if we don't have a keyframe there, I'll just click it again to remove it. We could also hover over any value and hit I for insert keyframe. So there's a bunch of ways to do this. But now we're telling Blender that this cube is going to be blue on frame one. Let's go over to frame 100 here and make this a different color. Let's set it to a nice green. Then I'll hover over this value and hit I again, or just click this little diamond icon. Now we've saved it as green on frame 100. What's cool about this though, is that since colors are just a collection of three numbers combined, the red, green, and blue values, it'll just blend between those three numbers as we go through our animation.
If we wanted to make this even cooler, then we could go over to frame 50 and make this a totally different color. Let's set it to a red. Let's make it nice and saturated, and again add a keyframe. Now it's going to start out blue, turn red, and then turn green, and transition between all of the colors in between. There's a ton we could talk about when it comes to animation, and Wayne Dixon does a fantastic job of breaking down all of the introductory stuff in the fundamentals of animation on CG Cookie. But if you're already used to some sort of animation and you're coming from another program, you might want to know where the graph editor is. And this is a more advanced animation tool than just these keyframes, which are nice, and we can you know click and drag them around, but that's about it. We can't really see the values of anything or change those here. For that, we can change over to our graph editor. So I'll drag up my timeline a little bit, and switch over from the timeline to the graph editor. And here we can see curves that represent all of our data and how Blender transitions between all of our keyframes. Again, if you're brand new to Blender, then I really wouldn't worry about this. But if you're already into animation, then you might want to visually be able to see exactly how Blender is changing the color. For example, if we expand our material here, go through our shader node tree, then we can see that we've keyframed our red, green, blue, and alpha values. If I double click on one of these lines, then it'll select the whole curve. And if I want to look at just this curve, I can go to view and frame selected or use the hotkey period on the number pad. That'll zoom right to this curve. And we can see that our red color is starting out at zero, going all the way up to 0.6 over here on the left, and then back on frame 100, going all the way down to almost zero. So here's just a visual representation of how our numbers are changing as things are animated. But again, if you're just getting started, then I really wouldn't worry about this quite yet. So let's head back to our timeline. I'll switch my editor over to the timeline and shrink it back down. Go ahead and take some time and practice animating different values in Blender. When you're ready, let's render out an animation. So let's say we want to render out just this part where our cube goes from blue on one side to green on the other. Well, we want our animation to end on frame 100 but right now it goes all the way to frame 250. So we just need to change our frame range right here to the right of our timeline. Let's set the end value to 100. Now when we hit play, it'll just loop between these. Now let's make sure our camera can actually see this action. So I'll hit Control, Alt, and Zero on my number pad and just scrub through our timeline to make sure that it starts on one side, ends on the other. I think I missed it just a little bit on the right. So I'll select my camera, hit G, and then one uh, little trick that I, I don't think I mentioned before, but if you hit the middle mouse button while you're inside the camera view, then you can uh, easily zoom in and out with your camera just by moving your mouse up and down. And then I'll hit G and then move this over to the right a little bit. Okay, so now we've captured all of this epic action here. Let's go ahead and save this out as an animation. If we hit F12 and render, then we'll just get a still image. So let's render out a movie. In a more professional workflow, I'd probably render out a sequence of images and then combine those images in a video editor. But for now, let's just edit out a movie so we can easily send it to people. I'll head over to my output properties like we did before. Our frame range is set correctly. Our frame rate is set at 24 FPS, which is perfectly fine, but don't tell Peter Jackson. And let's set our file format to FFmpeg. Then I'll set the output here. I'll save it to my desktop because I'm a barbarian. And I'll go to render, and instead of rendering image, I'll choose render animation. Then you'll see it walk through all of the frames. It might take some time depending on how complex your scene is. But once it's finished, then we can go ahead and close this out and go to render and view animation. That'll open up Blender's video player, but we can also open this up in any other software. So here we have our first video. Before you move on to the next lesson, try animating something for yourself and rendering that out. At this point, it doesn't really matter what it is, just have fun with it.